uh, we spoke the last time about getting uh, a team in place and then someone who models, a practitioner who models to the team and then you go to the business and you find the owner or the manager to allow you in and then you find the HR person. Am I right? Yeah, so once you've been given permission uh, by the owner or the manager, then you then want to talk to the person who's responsible for human resources. Uh, and that could be anybody in the organization, but that person, simply because they're working with all the staff. So, so they must now point you to what we call a go-to person. Who's that? The go-to person, we we've, couldn't find a word to describe the person, but a go-to person is a staff member that, uh, that seems to care for others. It, they, people go to them for advice. They go to share their challenges with them. They go to share the, the things that they're happy about to want to celebrate. They yeah. seem to be a natural, uh, a natural person. Yeah, this yeah. person doesn't have to be a spiritual person as such, a, 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 a church goer. Or a manager can be the secretary or whoever. Uh, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you said that because um, it is better uh, that the management are excluded from this particular process. You're wanting to work with with employees and the reason we do that is that there's a different relationship between the between the management and the employees so for a manager to be involved in this process it's more complicated and so we're trying we to go prefer to work like this and not like this so yes. so Joel so so this go-to person there might be three or four or five or six go-to persons then you uh, you as uh, the team team member approach this go-to person to do what? So the typical way we would approach uh, the go-to person would be, uh, as my friend Christian says, you approach the person and you would say something like, well, you are a person. And they would say, what do you mean? And say, well, a person uh, enjoys sharing their, their, their joys with somebody else. Okay. Uh, and they also uh, appreciate that they can share their problems with somebody else. And so, uh, we would like to start some groups in this company that facilitate that process even more effectively. And as we've spoken to the HR and we've spoken to some of the staff, you seem to be that kind of person. Would you be interested in, in facilitating a group that does that and, uh, and in the process discovers on how to do life better? You don't call it uh, a spiritual thing. Well, if they, if they say, well, what is it? We say, well, we call it a discovery Bible study. Uh, discovery Bible study. And then depending on obviously what their response is, we can then okay. say... Okay, well, let's fast the forward. So the go-to person say, yes, I'm interested. What, what does the go-to person have a responsibility before you go back? Before we go back, the go-to person needs to uh, obviously set up a time uh, and a venue for them to be able to get together with the... With the the natural people that are already uh, coming to them. That would be their group. Okay, so the people it's, it's that they're doing friends. life with. Their so friends or colleagues that they... So that they, they don't go pick people they don't know. They specifically work with them. They want to work with people that they do know because what our strategy here is is to plant this process within a pre-existent group that's already doing life together where there's natural leadership, there's natural relationships, there's natural accountability, there's natural support. I understand that. So how long will a group B, half an hour? Uh, depending again on the work situation, uh, you'd have to tailor make it, but uh, you do normally want, don't want to have more than four or five people in the group because you want everybody to participate, and so obviously that determines the length, but if you can aim for about half an hour, that's probably a good goal to shoot for. So I love it, it's small groups we're talking about. So the first time you go, you've got the time, you set it up, you go and as the coach, the team member, I understand that you go and model this thing to them because they've never seen it before. The first, the first one, uh, the team, the team uh, uh, person goes in and, and, I, and if I'm that person, I will model what a DBS looks like yeah. from start to finish. That would be the first step. Okay, so the go-to person recruited his own group, you go for the first time and you model it, you do it, you're there. Then the second meeting, if they want a second meeting, must, must you ask them if they want a second meeting? Yes, you, ha you have to say, would you like to meet next week? We assume they say yes, and then... What if they say no? If they say no, uh, then you go back to the HR and you find the other person. Okay, good. 
Now you don't get the go-to persons together. Every go-to person has his people. So you can have different numerous groups in the same building. Let's assume you go into a business and as a result of that they identify say six or seven uh, uh, go-to people. Then you would probably have to go back to your team, work out your logistics, and then your whole team needs to move in. And each, each one of those people would then go and model for for, uh, for a, a person. And maybe a good idea if you want to get traction in the business quickly. So if I understand it right, then from then on, you as the team member becomes the leader of the group. No, you understand it totally wrong. <laughs> you are definitely not the leader of the team. He's deliberate now. <laughs> so you've led the first one. So the second meeting, how does that The happen? second meeting, the go-to person facilitates that group. Okay. And you observe as the coach and if they deviate you can bring them back. So you'll have to go and see the go-to person before the time or she will be very afraid to do that. Well you tell them that that's going to be the next thing and uh, you maybe give them the outline and you can discuss with them and depending on them they might want to, to role play a little bit with you before the time whatever you need to do but the point is they are going to facilitate the next group. So and I understand that if that happens then it's so easy so that at the third meeting, the go-to person will ask one of his recruits to, to facilitate the group. That's correct. And the reason we do that is because we are looking at replication. And you want to replicate at every level. So you not only want to replicate the skill of being able to facilitate a group, you want to be able to replicate the skill of coaching someone else to facilitate a group. So you attend, as a team member, you've attended three meetings. This would be my third meeting, yes. And then after the third meeting, you don't go again. After the third meeting, depending on uh, uh, how effective it is, I probably won't go back again. Not immediately. Not immediately. What I then do is I move to being, to monitoring and encouraging. Okay, so from the team member, the group is in place. There might be more than one group in place because of more than one go-to person. And uh, so you become the monitor and the encourager of this leader. This go-to person. Of the go-to person. Okay, how do you do that? Well, uh, we, we've uh, figured out a very simple way of evaluating the health of a group. And uh, I've uh, coined a mnemonic uh, called, we want to know what the health is. And so, normally when you think about health, you think about, is this, a, is this DNA healthy? And so, the D stands for, to what extent, the question is, to what extent are the people in the group discovering and applying truth. Okay, so first thing, and that, that's because in this group discovery and self-discovery is so important, the D stands for you want to find out are they discovering the truth? And applying it. Oh, and applying. Not and discovering applying it. Discovering and applying it. And so if you have got six people in your group and uh, five of them, or all six of them have, have discovered something and they have formulated their I will statement, or what they are going to do that week to apply the truth. And uh, next week when they get together, the first question is, let's debrief, how did it go? And let's say four of the six said we, uh, we obeyed, and two said, well, we struggled, or uh, well, we didn't obey. Okay. And then it would be four out of six, and you have a percentage for the D. So you will ask the, the, the what we call this guy, the, the go-to the person, go person by telephone or whatever way. Telephone, WhatsApp, email. Say, have they discovered the truth and have they applied it? Okay, then you know the D. And the N, I believe, must stand for nurturing relationships, am I right? Nurturing relationships, absolutely right. Uh, in the discovery group, uh, we ask the question, uh, what, what is something that's stressing you out or what need that you have? And apart from praying for one another, we also ask the question, how can we practically assist one another with whatever the need was? Okay. And we want to establish to what extent has that happened. So if Ramana, you just ask, have you looked after each other and was their needs mentioned and how have you helped each other? Correct. Correct. And then the A stands for what? The A stands for apostolic focus. I couldn't figure out another one to you. So, but it simply means, apostolic simply means an outward focus. So in the group there, at the beginning, when we ask people about uh, what need do you have and what are you thankful for, the, and we've gone around the circle, the next question is, uh, what need is there in the community that we are aware of that we could possibly as a group get involved in? Okay. And so this would be the feedback is to say last week we identified that uh, a need uh, and, 
and we either met it or we didn't meet it. So it goes two ways. First is the apostolic focus of the group. So you ask, have you as a group found something and are you doing it? Correct. So the second thing is the person himself in the group. Yes, the second question that, uh, that has to do with an outward focus. You've now discovered your, uh, the truth that you need to apply to your life. Uh, and uh, you committed to doing that and in the group you also committed to telling somebody in your natural uh, 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 place of uh, sport or home other people that you're doing life with that are not at work one of those people you are committed to telling what it is that you discovered that you were going to apply to your life and what the passage of scripture was that you the story line in the scripture that you had covered that's what you're going to tell and to we want to find out if you've got six in your group how many of the six actually did it and what was the response from the recipient okay now it happens like in many of my groups that happened in the post that the people don't do it and they are very afraid of these kind of questions what them what are you going to do and uh, my, your, your I, my, I will statement, they say, well, I will trust God to do something, and then they don't do it. So, depending on what they answer, you now intervene. Yes, so an intervention would be like this. Let's say, for instance, uh, they say this person, uh, they're not sharing uh, with anybody. Yeah. Uh, then I would, I would attend that group, and I would do some role playing. With, uh, oh, okay. Now, now, now it goes back to the group. So you see, he attended the first three groups, and they, they start working with the go-to person, call, ask all these nurturing questions, and if there's a kind of a problem that he says that emerges or something that he must, he can go back. So then he will go back and help the the, the group to overcome that problem. Yeah. So I don't go back to go and lead the group. Uh, I, if I go back, the person who happens to be leading that week is going to lead that group and we can let them do the whole thing. But when they get to the place where they say, uh, this is what I've discovered and this is what I'm going to tell my friend, at that point, uh, uh, we normally have some fun with it. I would say something like, let's say the one lady's name is Sue and she says she's going to tell her friend Sally. Yeah. Then I would say, okay, Sue, have a look at this whole group. Who looks the most like Sally? Me? And then the, and then you could smile and we'd say, okay, now you Sally, and now we're fast forwarding, and now, okay, now you're there, now say hello Sally, and everybody okay, so you role play and, and you role play. play. Like Fantastic. Role okay, Charles, but so now you're in the process, you started the thing, you nurtured it, you look after the go-to person, you intervene when necessary. How long do you stay connected? to the, that whole process. Okay, so let's assume now that as a result of uh, them sharing their I will statement with the other person, there's normally uh, possibly three kinds of responses. The one response is, uh, you know, Gerard, I'm very happy about all the stuff that you're discovering, but I'm really not interested in hearing any more about this stuff. That could be a response. The other response is, of course, that the person does absolutely nothing is another response. The other response could be, Gerard, this group that you're part of, can I not join your group? Uh, and the answer is no, my, our group is full. And I suppose because this is a work environment, it's actually quite easy to do. Very opposite to the old cell group systems we had, where we invited everybody in, even people we don't know. So now you've got your group and you don't allow outsiders in. Yes, and the reason is not because we don't love them. The reason is we have found that it is more effective to plant this process in a pre-existent group that's already doing life together than to create an artificial relationship. Okay, so the go-to person is finding new leaders and coaching new leaders who will start with their new groups. Well, the go-to person, the leaders that they have found are already in their group, it's the other five people in their group. Yeah. Those are automatic. We assume that everybody uh, can do this. Yeah. And we are also assuming that everybody will do this. Yeah. So you guys who uh, know a little bit more about the discipleship process, heard about it, do that. Don't understand what we, why we talk about go-to persons. It's just so that normal people can also understand it. It is the uh, Luke 10 man of peace person we're talking here about. If you don't know what I'm saying, it's okay, it's fine. Looking for the go-to person. So Charles, you are the team member. You're working with go-to person number one. Stay connected to him. Then he finds, starts with another group, and that's uh, the second generation. Okay, so when you say he finds, uh, we are assuming that the, the, the person in his group is now spoken to somebody else, 
and they are now going to go and coach that person. Whether it's his wife or someone else in the it business does, it, or whatever. It, it does not matter. What we suggest is that he doesn't go by himself or she doesn't go by herself, but two of the people go together. Oh, okay. So two of the group will go. The same thing happens. The same right? thing the happens. The same thing happens. And they do the first one and then the second and the third. Okay, so then you, this go-to person becomes the coach yes. of this person who is now starting it. As the team leader, you might have to go the first time with them when they go and do it. Oh, so you, just to support them. Okay. Because remember, they've never done this. Yeah. They've seen it done here, but they've never done it there. Yeah. So you might have to be involved as the team member, be involved again, just to assist them. I uh, started a group in Freight, and uh, I spoke to another business person who was very keen, but to this day, I haven't been able to get the guys just to go. So okay. I've realized, unless I make, I make the appointment and take them by the hand so that yeah. they can experience it the first time, it's probably not okay, going to Okay, so, Miriam, I get up, I'm the team member, I start with you, Charles, you're my first go-to person, you start with your group, and next to Charles sits Sally, and Sally starts with her next person. So I am coaching you, you are coaching her. Do I have any connections to her too? It depends on your personal relationship capacity. Some people can relate to more people than others. Uh, if you are monitoring properly with, with me, uh, you should not need to have too much connection with, with Sally and the rest. But it's important to know what's going on because we are talking about replication. Yes, so, so that feedback, the DNA feedback, you are now going to, if I'm reporting now back to you and I've got Sally, I'm going to find out what's happening with Sally but that information I'm also going to give back to you so that you know what's happening in my group and you also know what's happening in Sally's group and if Sally recruits Kim then you're going to know what's happening in Kim's group as well. You should know about four levels deep. It's important that Charles said we should know about four levels deep. The people who know this they say that after the fourth level then it really becomes a movement, a multiplying movement but after that the fifth level then it, it there's a, there's a barrier that you've got to break and once it's been broken, you see movement. So we must really go for it to see replication at least to the fourth generation. We cannot speak of growth. If we're only busy with one group, then we cause a dam. We don't want to cause a dam. We want the river to flow. So, uh, thanks so much, Joel. So, yeah. listen, just by the way, if you're wondering now, where is that in the Bible? You get Paul saying, Paul, Timothy, faithful men, others also, four generations. Thank you. You're welcome. Go for it. Yes.